trample all over and not worry about those that have to live here and have a piece of the American pie themselves. You know, I mean, this is a country. I, we don't go to other countries and say, hey, I know this is your country, but hey, uh, you know what? It's land and it, it belongs to all of us, so I'm going to sh- crap all over it. You know, whatever. Oh, so, right. you know what I mean? Yep. You, that's, that is precisely what Trump means when he says, either we have a country or we don't. Right. Right. No, absolutely. That's, that's what he means. That's exactly what he means. When, when, when we're talking about border security, we're talking about either we have a country or we don't. If you want to have open borders, we don't have a country, period. We do not have a country. And if you want to close the borders, then that's just acknowledging that we do actually have a country. And so anyway, you look at Marco Rubio and what he did with the Gang of Eight, which we all know was wrong, and has been the character of him show there. And then you look at what he did uh, telling people, I mean, we're talking about a campaign where you're trying to get people to elect you out of your own your own, you know, you got to earn your your voters to vote for you and to support you as a person, as a candidate for the president of the United States. Instead of voting for me, vote for Kasich. Yeah, that's it's it's unconscionable. That doesn't even that's it's that's 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 sandbagging. It's, it's, that's sandbagging. It's, it's and game, if you're playing it's game in the system, well, yeah, but it, sandbagging. If you're playing spades and the your buddy next to you. And you and him are in cahoots with everybody else at the table, and each one of you are sandbagging so that you all can win, and nobody at the table wins, dude. That's that's as bad as uh, Lion Ted. Yeah, it's it's um, it's just messed up. And here's another thing: I talked to a, a Kasich supporter when I was going door to door, and he said uh, my number one choice is Kasich. And I said, well, just out of curiosity. Why is your number one choice Kasich? And this is just run-of-the-mill, average Ohio guy who um, definitely pays attention to politics, but he's not involved enough to, like, know every single minute detail. But he said, my number one thing, my number one issue, overwhelmingly above all other issues, is pro-life. I'm pro-life, and it disgusts me. And he actually goes out and... and, uh, protest Planned Parenthood uh, facilities and stuff like that. So he's he's so into the pro-life thing, right? And he said just recently Kasich signed a bill uh, defunding a lot of the Planned Parenthoods in Ohio. And when he heard that, he said, he's, he's got my vote. And I said, well, just out of curiosity, what's your second vote? And he said, Trump. He said, I like Trump and I would vote for Trump, but because of the Planned Parenthood thing that Kasich did and the pro-life thing, right now my vote's with Kasich. So here's my point. There are Kasich voters out there who Trump is their second choice. Right. And so for, for him to win Ohio, for Kasich to win Ohio, doesn't necessarily mean that Ohio rejected Trump. Okay, so what... Well, no, when definitely Rubio, it doesn't because it is so very... Very tight. The racist. I think Trump is only up by five points. Uh, no, I thought the, the Kasich was up five points. No, in no, Ohio. no, not anymore. No, really? No, Trump's oh, up, Trump's wow, up five. that's a big turnaround. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he was down five for a while. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, the t- well he, I think the t- hey, hey, if there's if there's any justice in the world, what happened in Chicago should just cause a steamroller effect and Trump should win everything by 20 points every single every state from here on out if there's any justice in the world because that's just so messed up but anyway go ahead yeah well if you follow the timeline and, and depending on which ones you look at um, okay I'm looking at a new poll right now they're saying uh, Trump up three Kasich up two uh, one poll does have Kasich up five uh, another poll has Trump up just by a couple. So it's a very, oh very tight God. race. Hold on, though. So you're saying that all the media outlets are just reporting on the one where he's up, where Kasich's up. Right. Okay, exactly. Now, here's the thing that you've got to know. Back last summer, Kasich was up 15 to 20. Well, and that was back uh, in the summertime. Everybody treated Trump's candidacy as the same kind of joke that it appeared to be four years prior, which okay, everybody... Well, but here's my. But I need. Yeah, I need you to understand, and everybody out there, please understand that Trump has become this movement 
that literally may take Ohio as well as Florida. Well, they're certainly going to take Florida. Florida, it's just all done. It's so sad. So, so sad. <laughs> Right. And when, then, uh, when, oh, uh, when, when Salon.com is telling you about how Rubio is over, and we haven't even had the Florida uh, primary yet, I think, yeah, that pretty much says it all. Right. And there's another one that says, um, uh, where is it? Uh, Trump expands big lead in Florida, up in Ohio. Uh, people close to Rubio contemplate getting out of the race before Florida. Rubio's advisors are telling him, bro, if you lose your state, it may damage your political career forever. However, um, if you weird, jump, though, hold not, on, hold on. They're saying, not, okay, go ahead. they're saying if you jump out now before Florida, because you're not going to win it, and if you get out now, you can still have a political career. That's, that's a very interesting point, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. You don't want to have such a massive loss. Look at Al Gore. Al Gore is done. And you know what really did him in? What really did him in was that he lost Tennessee in the 2000 election campaign. And he's, he was from Tennessee. Oh, wow. He lost his own state. Yeah, he wow. lost Tennessee. That was a huge embarrassment. And he still almost won. Could you imagine... Him winning the presidency and losing your home state, I mean, that's got to be very rare, extremely rare to lose your home state and win the presidency. Yeah, no, I don't see that at all. Well, And then I know we talked about Mitt Romney on the last show and, and everything that he was doing. Earlier this week, last Tuesday, Mitt Romney came out with robo-tweets for the election that went down on Tuesday. Yeah. Robo-tweets. For uh, 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 Ted Cruz and and Rubio, uh, yeah, his whole thing this whole week and past week is just start to bash Trump, and you know that that's not going to look good for either the establishment. I don't see how it hurts Trump that much. Everybody looks at at Mitt Romney as the guy who lost the election, right? And honestly, right. let's go a step further. He stole. Defeat from the jaws of victory. Uh, yes, and let me let me correct myself really quick. Uh, they were robo tweets for Rubio and Kasich, not Cruz. I apologize. However, yeah, he, because if you listen, if he, you listen to, to Mitt Romney, it's all about stopping Trump. He doesn't give a crap who gets elected. Right. He just wants Trump to be stopped. Right. Correct. However, uh, Ted Cruz received Mitt Romney's seal of approval. And uh, Ted Cruz did not disavow that or say he didn't. No, no, that's that's not cool. He should have said it's not cool. You know why? Because we broke on this show either last week or the week before. I think it was last week. We broke on this show that the only reason Mitt is even speaking up is because he was offered the presidency, the, uh, not right. the presidency, the nomination for the GOP uh, in the smoke-filled room. They're, they're literally saying, listen, this is how it's going to go down. We're going to go to uh, Cleveland at the convention uh, with Trump not having enough to seal the deal. So what we're going to do is, look, we, we can't have Cruz. We cannot have Cruz. We know we cannot have Trump. Uh, Rubio, whatever, I, I just don't think he's going to make it happen and Kasich uh, they think he's a joke whatever you Mitt you I think if we throw you in there you're the guy that almost won it last time the, the, the Republicans in the, in the whole country will accept the fact that you're the nominee because what have Republicans always done historically they always pick the next in line and with Mitt Romney having narrowly lost the last election he's technically still in line Right? Correct. And the Washington. And that's what they called him. And so now Mitt Romney's going out saying, elect, elect uh, Rubio, elect uh, Kasich, you know, vote for him, vote for him, vote for him. Because he knows those people aren't going to win. Right. So last Sunday, when we were doing our show, the Washington Times came out with an article, and the title is. Mitt Romney won't rule out accepting GOP nomination at contested convention. 
Right, and that right there, I mean, that is the proof that I need. This yeah. would be, I'll tell you what, I could, I could convince a jury of my peers to convict, <laughs> to, to win the case that the whole reason Mitt Romney is even speaking up is because he's, he's doing this to become the nominee, flat out. Right, right. He was offered the nominee. He, he went out there and gave that, that scathing 20-minute diatribe, just went off about Trump. It was anti-Trump through and through, just directly attacking him. And then afterwards, he comes out and says, uh, uh, vote for Kasich, vote for Rubio. Make sure these guys uh, win enough of, their, of the states to um, make it impossible. It is, it, the theme of his entire campaign, of Mitt Romney's campaign right now, is you've got to stop Trump. And then that way, when they get to Cleveland, they can do the brokered convention, and they're going to push for Mitt Romney, and they're going to try to sell. It's going to be all-out spin room oh, going on there. So, it's going to be horrendous. Yeah. So, so while the GOP is bashing Trump, while the GOP is coming out and doing all the things that they're, they're doing, Trump comes out last week and says to the establishment, it's time to unify. We could win this easily. It's time. That's by. That's an article by Real Clear Politics, and um, it's just amazing how how Trump has this ability, has this momentum, and what is amazing is that the the GOP establishment is taking forever and 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 not getting on board, not embracing what the people want. However. Uh, I think it was a day or two ago, Reince Priebus, um, the head of the GOP, said, verbally said, we will support whoever is nominated. Now, he might be uh, saying that knowing that it's going to be Mitt Romney. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, why wouldn't you? You know, well, fake it till you make it, right? I mean, you got to right. flat out. Right. And, and also, he's not alienating Trump voters by saying that, and that's fine. But... He, he can't say. Everybody knows you, you would be. It would be political suicide to say. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, if Trump uh, gets the majority of the delegates, uh, we're just not going to support him. <laughs> you, you can't say that. That would be right? that would be lunacy. That would be absolutely right. lunacy. Right. So instead, you avoid the question. Because the question is probably, hey, right, uh, if Trump becomes the nominee, will you uh, back him and support him as, I shouldn't say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If Trump becomes, uh, or, or enters the, the, uh, the uh, convention with the most, the, the majority of the uh, delegates, would you support him? Instead of saying, yes, if Trump gets there, and he has a majority, we're going to back him 100%. No, he didn't say that. He said, I'm going to support whoever the GOP nominates, which could be Mitt Romney. Right. No, you're absolutely right. It's just... So he didn't answer the question. Oh, well, he answered the question he wanted to answer. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So check this out. I know I've talked about her uh, often. Donald Trump. Oh, what is it the sorry. media doesn't get? Oh, come on. Come on, man. Uh, Katri I like that. Katrina, she's uh, Trump's campaign manager, or campaign is spokesman. She a hurricane? Oh, is she a hurricane? Oh, she <laughs> is. A, there is no lie. She's a hurricane. <laughs> she's Hurricane Katrina, epic Trump spokeswoman. She, okay. I, as a title, um, epic ponage of CNN. So CNN has her on, and the the, the guy is. He's dumbfounded by Trump, and he starts to poke at her. So what is it that we don't get? What is it that we don't understand? And uh, this exchange between her and him is just classic uh, CNN, and it also reflects uh, classic on the GOP, reflects on, on, on Rubio. This is everything that we talk about here on Smith Radio that is wrong with those that are trying to uh, artificially pick 
our nominee. Uh, I hate that. You know what I'm saying, though? So let me let me yeah. Roll. Oh yeah. See if we can roll with this. Donald Trump. What is?